if someone who knew nothing about jazz asked you what piano players they should listen to, you'd point to him. His harmonic sophistication, his deep swinging groove, his accompanying full horn players, as well as singers, was incredible. He's a personal favorite. Who is Wynton Kelly? Join us. Wynton Kelly was born December 2nd, 1931 in British West Indies of Jamaica. His family moved to Brooklyn when he was four, and he began playing the piano around the same time. He did not receive much formal training in music early on. He attended the High School of Music and Art and the Metropolitan Vocational High School in New York City studying theory. Kelly started his professional career in 1943, initially as a member of the rhythm and blues groups. At the age of 15, Kelly toured the Caribbean as part of Ray Abrams' R&B band. Kelly made his recording debut at 16, playing on saxophonist Hal Singer's 1948 Cornbread, which became a Billboard R&B chart-topping hit. His main influence was Bud Powell, but there was a lot of Teddy Wilson in his playing. He became better known after joining vocalist Dinah Washington's band in 1951. In 1952, he played in bands led by Lester Young and then recorded later that year with Dizzy Gillespie. In September of 1952, Kelly was just beginning to build a reputation when he was drafted into the Army. After a period at Fort McClellan in Alabama, Kelly was part of the Third Army Traveling Show. Kelly was released from the military after two years following which he worked on and off with Washington and Gillespie again. Kelly was also part of the Charles Mingus group. In 1956, Kelly recorded with vocalist Billie Holiday, including the original version of her song, Lady Sings the Blues, as well as for the Blue Note debuts of saxophonist Johnny Griffin and Sonny Rollins. Kelly was much in demand as a sideman for recordings and appeared on albums by most of the major jazz leaders in the late 1950s and early 1960s, making albums with Cannonball Adderley, Blue Mitchell, and Hank Mobley. In January 1959, Kelly joined the Miles Davis Quintet and stayed with the trumpeter until March of 1963, appearing on the studio albums of Kind of Blue, Someday My Prince Will Come as well as on numerous concert recordings. Kelly made his first recording with guitarist Wes Montgomery in 1961. When he left Davis, Kelly formed his own trio with two others leading the trumpeter, bassist Paul Chambers and drummer Jimmy Cobb. They soon embarked on a national tour and had recording dates with Verve Records. In the summer of 1965, they joined Wes Montgomery on a tour of the U.S. that included an appearance at the Newport Jazz Festival and a club recording released as Smoking at the Hat. Kelly died in Toronto, Canada, following an epileptic seizure in April of 1971. Wynton Kelly was known as one of the best accompanists in jazz. Jimmy Cobb once said about Kelly's playing, it's happy sounding all the time. It's got a West Indian kind of hop to it, always sparkly. Wynton Kelly, one of the all-time great piano players.